Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals in GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about conditional statements. In a conditional statement, something will happen if something else is true. And we use this all the time in our everyday lives. For example, if it is raining, I will use an umbrella. In other words, if A is true, then B. This is normally abbreviated to if A, then B. One very important note is that while I will be using very simple examples for the purpose of this tutorial, in the structure if A, then B, both A and B could be arbitrarily long expressions. For example, it could be if it is raining and I have an umbrella, then I will use an umbrella, where A is both the if it is raining and I have an umbrella, and you have to evaluate both of those. We'll come back to this topic in the Boolean logic tutorial. So that's what a conditional statement is. Now let's talk about the three elements or parts of a conditional statement in code. And they are the if, the else, and the else if, and then certain combinations of the above. So let's walk through each of these one by one. First, we have the if statement. In the if statement, let's say our code is going along, and then we start the if statement. It's going to evaluate whether that expression is true. If it is true, it's going to come over here and do whatever this is, and then continue. And if this expression is false, then this code will be skipped entirely and will just continue on. In code, that would look like this. You've got some code before, you got some code after. It's gonna check this variable. If this evaluates to true, then it's gonna say, use an umbrella. Otherwise, we're gonna skip this line and just keep going on in the code. Next up, we have the else part of the if statement. If else. In an if else statement, something will always happen. The code's going along, it hits this part, it evaluates it. If it is true, it will do this. If it is false, it will do this. So now, regardless of whether A is true or false, something will happen. True this, false that. And then the code will continue. In code, that would look like this. If is raining, then show debug message, use an umbrella. Otherwise, show debug message, you're good. And then the code continues. Again, the important thing to note is that one of these two things, either this or this, will definitely happen. If this is true, this will happen. And if this is false, this will happen. So one of these will happen. Finally, we have the else if. The way the else if works, actually let me skip forward one slide here, is we say if something is true, do this, else if something else is true, do that. So first, we evaluate whether or not A is true. If it is true, we do X, and then we go on. If it is false, then we evaluate whether B is true, and if it is, we do Y, and if there's no else statement at the end, we just skip everything and we go on. Again, you can see that in code here, where we have if is raining, show debug message, use an umbrella, else if is sunny, show debug message, use sunglasses. Now I've written the if, else if structure in two different ways here. Normally you would want to use this one. It's more concise, easier to type, and will avoid multiple indentations as you go. But these two things are the exact same. You can say if, else if, or you can say if, else, and then if. They're doing the exact same thing. And in fact, you can see that in this chart where this looks like the if else, if else, and then this looks like another if statement. And of course, you can add an else statement to the if else as well. So you can say, if A, do this, else if B, do this, else, do that. And then the code will continue. That would look like this. If it's raining, use an umbrella, else if it's sunny, use sunglasses, otherwise, you're good. You can also chain else if statements. So you can say if A, else if B, else if C, and you could continue to do this as long as you want. And then you could say else at the very end if you wanted. Putting it all together, if statements always start with an if, and then you can add as many else ifs as you want. You're not required to add any, but you can add as many as you want. And then finally, you may end with an else. But it always goes in that order. If, then else ifs, if you want, and then else. 
All right, so here I have a simple project that I've already compiled and I've already stopped in the debugger and now we're just gonna step through it. So the first thing that happens is we're gonna set these two variables to true. Notice how they pop up down here and remember that true is the same as one in GameMaker Studio 2 or one is the same as true and zero is the same as false. Now we're going to evaluate this if statement. So if is rainy, that's true. So we should come in here and we should print out this debug message. And indeed, that's what happens. Next, we're going to switch is raining to false so we can see the alternative. So now this is false, zero, zero. So it should skip this line entirely, come in here and print out your good. And again, that's what happens. Over here, you're good. Finally, we're going to use the full if else if else structure. Now this is false and this is true. So we would expect it to skip this line, come in here, and then this will be finished. So it will skip this line and skips that line, goes in there because this is true, prints out use sunglasses, and then skips that line, prints out the tests are done. See? You're good. Use sunglasses. Test done. In summary, if statements are a way of allowing you to say something will happen only if something else is true. And the three elements to an if statement or the three possible elements are if, else, and else if, where you always start with an if, you can then have as many else ifs as you want, but you don't have to have any, and you can end with an else. As always, the links in this slide will be below along with the source code and links to these slides themselves. That's it. Thanks for watching.